Welcome back to the new year and our first video of 2019. It has been a few weeks since our last video update and we've seen a remarkable level of volatility in markets over the traditionally quiet Christmas period, including a yen flash crash. The biggest driver of markets over the few weeks since our last update has clearly been a fundamental reassessment of central bank outlooks and pricing, with Fed patients now being emphasised. With global growth momentum appearing to stall in late 2018, compounded by news of China slowing and the US government shutdown, following the December Fed hike, markets quickly priced out any further monetary tightening and now suggest the Fed tightening cycle is over. This has clearly weighed on the US dollar and bond yields. We also saw Bank of Canada last week pause at their January meeting and signal a more cautious outlook. Having hiked three times in 2018, as at early December, markets had been around 70% priced for a hike at their January meeting. However, this was before the global repricing and the Bank of Canada's pause also added to this more dovish reassessment of central bank outlooks. However, this seems an overreaction to us. While Fed officials have recently sent soothing messages emphasising policy patience as the economic landscape develops, as well as their ability to alter their balance sheet reduction, their median dot forecast produced a month ago was for two additional hikes in 2019, with six members calling for three hikes. US data has remained strong, as evidenced by the 312,000 payrolls gro growth we saw in December. However, risks abound, and the US government shutdown is now the longest in history, which is surely likely to weigh on sentiment and economic growth, and could be a reason to keep the Fed sidelined. This cautious outlook has also extended locally, with markets now pricing over 50% chance of a rate cut from the RBA and the RBNZ this year. Local data flow has been mixed, but the year has started with a fresh bout of pessimism towards the Australian economy. This week saw the first consumer confidence read of the year. Having spent all 2018 in optimistic territory, confidence evaporated to begin 2019, falling 4.7%. Clearly an unsettling development for the RBA, given their concerns around the consumption outlook. Housing also remains a key focus locally as prices continue to correct. APRA announced easing of their macro prudential restrictions before Christmas, with a 30% limit on interest only lending removed. Notably, a few smaller lenders have raised mortgage rates over January, citing higher funding costs, which has renewed focus on the RBA's reaction. Here, we won't have long to wait to find out with the RBA's first meeting of the year on February 5th to be followed by Governor Lowe speaking on the 6th and then SOMP on the 8th, where surely their growth forecast will be revised down. Finally, Brexit has been the other key macro driver and it took a further shambolic turn, with Prime Minister May's Brexit proposal suffering the largest defeat for a sitting government in UK history. Now, sterling has been perversely rallying in this environment and the pound has touched two month highs as the market considers potential delays to the March 29 Brexit date or the possibility of a second referendum. Now, it's hard to see how that is a positive when it is just reflecting deeper divisions within the UK government. Prime Minister May will present her Plan B on the 21st and another parliamentary vote is scheduled on January 29th, so Brexit will rightly remain in focus in coming weeks. All up then, there is plenty to talk about as we start the new year and the first weeks of 2019 have shown risks, volatility, and policy uncertainty have risen. However, it is increasingly hard to find a winner amongst currency pairs, with downside risks apparent everywhere. Perhaps the global economy will have to look to China again, and US-China trade negotiations could thus be the biggest driver of sentiment in coming weeks, with markets recently whipsawed by stories suggesting the US government was considering removing tariffs as a potential tactic to break the stalemate. Although this has been subsequently denied, US external trade negotiations and Trump's internal wall negotiations will be key to watch in coming days. We'll be back to talk to you next week.